Elon Musk is working on the Everything app. What does that mean? Recently, they announced payments within X as an initiative for 2024. What is X? Previously known as Twitter. I'm Timmy Napso, Executive Vice President and Co-Founder of Fortis. We are an embedded payment company making payment experiences remarkable for software vendors, ERP publishers, small, mid-size, and enterprise businesses across the United States and Canada. So we hear this news about Twitter, now known as X, and all of the changes that Elon Musk wants to make. If you go back to when Elon Musk, the controversial acquisition of Twitter at that time, one thing that we learned is he started to make some comparisons to WeChat which is based in China. It is second to Alibaba in payment acceptance and payment transfer in, in, uh, in all of China, which is tremendous and one of the leaders in the world in payment movement. What does that mean? What are they doing exactly? And what Elon Musk said at the time was, hey, look, why don't we just copy what they're doing? Nobody's actually able to do what they're doing there. It's not as easy as he's saying. There is a lot of bureaucracy around the banking industry, a lot of red tape. It's highly complex, and for good reason. We are not centralized as a bank where one group makes a decision on all things banking. There are perspectives on how this works, different systems, different technology. As we know as an example, EMV chip and pin that came to the United States a officially in 2015 was a technology announced in France in 1992. So we're a little slow to the party when it comes to those types of things. Again, for good reason. A lot of fraud, a lot of situations from a risk perspective, a lot of infrastructure needs to be supported in order to move dollars across bank accounts. But Elon Musk is extremely passionate about moving money, especially in the peer-to-peer -peer market where he started with PayPal. As a co-founder of PayPal, what did he look to solve? He said, hey, look, we're going to start with this peer-to-peer. -peer. I want to pay my babysitter. I want my babysitter to pay a friend for dinner. I want to, at college, somebody bought me a meal and I want to pay my share. Easy peer-to-peer -peer transferring. Then we started to see this really big push into bank transferring like Venmo and other companies coming to the marketplace to create this type of environment of easy payments click of a button, living in a really solid ecosystem. So that's what WeChat offers. Once you get into the WeChat ecosystem, you're actually, you don't need to leave the ecosystem. We've seen a lot of news come out on X and how their payments are going to affect the future. A lot of people are not fully understanding what the starting point of their payments are. So in late 2023, they decided they're going to start to obtain money transfer licenses from each respective state. I want to say that again, you have to go to every state and apply for a money transfer license in order to transfer money across state lines. And you got to follow particular rules and regulations, highly regulated in order to do this, because as you can imagine, it is a highly targeted fraud industry, the banking industry and banks and money and so on and so forth. So what Elon Musk is saying is, hey, look, I don't believe we need banks at all. So right there, first thing. What are we hearing? We're hearing the first threat is not to small and mid-sized businesses. It is not to um, merchant services companies. It is not to uh, other ecosystems. At this stage, it is simply really threatening, in my opinion, you, the banking industry, as well as possibly the PayPals of the world, the Venmos of the world, and so on and so forth. There's something interesting that we're seeing happen, though. He's introducing, really, Dogecoin right, the cryptocurrency as a part of a platform that's going to transform how payments are done in a peer-to-peer -peer model on X, essentially modeling it against the WeChat uh, product in China. The everything app, really important for us to think about this. What does that mean? Elon Musk is forward thinking. We've seen what he's done with products like Tesla. Uh, shaking up the entire you know, uh, uh, EV market, uh, uh, electric vehicle market. We've seen the boring companies start to accept 
payments for your Dogecoin. This is really to, to have a trip, which is in Las Vegas, they take you under this really cool tunnel. You can actually see this online. As long as you have a Tesla, they're testing this tunnel to kind of, you know, fix traffic. Eventually, they would all be self-driving vehicles is what he's seeing the future of transportation looking like. So with that being said, really important for us to think about this. You have this huge ecosystem of people operating on the platform Twitter, now X. 225 million users on the platform. And they're on there for about 21 minutes on average per day. Now we're gonna take it to the next step. Similar to other platforms, Facebook Marketplace, TikTok Marketplace, we're seeing all these marketplaces pop up. The one thing that Twitter X wants to do at this stage is say, hey, once you're in that marketplace, you don't really have to leave the marketplace to make your payment. You actually make it within the X ecosystem, essentially saying you will no longer need a bank when you operate within the X ecosystem. What is the point of the bank? They're so slow. They move slow. We would just replace it, essentially. We're going to talk about consumer habits for a quick second here. And Fortis as a company focuses on small, mid-sized businesses, enterprise businesses as well, and helping move their transactions. Moving transactions is very important, right? Because what we're finding is at one point in time, the business dictated, the technology dictated the habit of the consumer to acquire something from your business. So as an example, if I wanted to buy something from you, you would say, hey, you got to walk in and you got to run a credit card payment at my location. You got to walk in and write a check at my location. Thinking about future proofing our businesses and future proofing how business runs and how we transmit inf information is to meet our customer where they are. So what are we seeing? We're seeing customers that now want to just double click their iPhone and tap to pay much more common than it was 24 months ago. In addition to that, we're also seeing the general consumer start to say, hey, look, when I am on a page, I just want to be able to make a payment. You're asking me for my full credit card number. I have to leave the ecosystem and go somewhere else. I'll just use Amazon just because it's one step less for me to make a purchase. Similarly, on our devices, if you have an Apple Pay device, if you have a Google device, so on and so forth, what you're starting to see is just double click and make the payment and you could utilize Apple Pay to make your payment. The complexity as business owners is actually what we are starting to pay attention to. Paying attention to these complexities is what's going to separate us from every other business that either survives in the future or doesn't. Is it an immediate threat? No, but this story is starting to take shape and is taking shape very quickly as we watch how the world continues to shift to this digital environment. People aren't paying with cash like they used to. They also are saying they don't want to even pull out a credit card anymore. They actually just want to use the device that they have, including possibly your watch to make a payment, which is happening today as well. What is your habit as a consumer? And does that habit essentially shift as the next several years come into our shifting ecosystem in payments? People like Elon Musk are shaped shaping and shifting how we do business. So here we have X, this uh, uh, platform where people make payments. And we're saying to ourselves as business owners, well, if I want to sell something on X, what do I have to do? If I want to sell something on Facebook, what do I have to do? If I want to sell something on TikTok, what do I have to do? Instagram, name your platform of tomorrow. And it's not I only one place. It is this omni-channel experience that we do have to, have to recognize that we have to meet our customers where they are. So X is an example. A lot of technical people, a lot of thought leaders, forward-thinking uh, uh, usage, news. There's a lot of that happening on X. So as a starting point, we believe that's where the value is going to come. I have a software. I want to sell a software. I want to you know, put somebody on a recurring model with my software and allow payments to automatically run, so on and so forth. That could happen with, with X. It's going to take time. It never happens as quickly as somebody wants because there is a lot of red tape. But what we do want to pay attention to, as mid and small business owners especially, is that the habit of the consumer will dictate where we sell our products. 
where we sell our services. Here at Fortis, as a quick example, you know, we have this thing called the guided journey. Why the guided journey? What's so important about a guided journey? The idea behind a guided journey is it is extremely complicated in today's day and age. It is complex to say, well, I want to sell in all these different ways. How do I make sure that we're not just one dimensional as a company? Because not only do our products have to be unique in today's business environment, as done our methodology of how we accept payments, how we transfer a receipt, how we put somebody on a payment plan. What are we really trying to do? We're trying to remove the friction for the cardholder. Card Once they've tasted how easy it can be, they don't want to go back to the old way. And we're seeing quite a bit of that. Many of us as consumers have been on a website. We have found a product and we like the product and we want to buy it from the first point of contact to advertise to us. And we look and we're like, wow, this product is, you know, $40. I want to buy it and you hit click here to purchase. If they ask you for your credit card number, there's a high percentage of buyers that actually go onto Amazon, will search for the same product and say, buy now. And it'll be at their door within 24 hours, a couple of days if they're a prime member. Disruption isn't just happening at the product level. It's not just happening from a advertising law, because even after you've advertised to them and you've got them to the thing that you want to purchase, you now have to get them across the finish line. That is not easy to do. So simplicity matters, right? A platform experience matters. You know, one touch purchasing matters. And this is something that Elon Musk is really pushing for as time goes on. And we should pay attention to these habits because these habits that we're witnessing are not something that is wanted or needed just by saying, I want those things. It is the habit of the consumer, including ourselves as consumers and business owners to say, yes, that is actually how I want to make a purchase. That is how I act. Why would I not want the same for my customer? So with that being said, there's a lot of folks betting on Elon Musk. We've seen even Dogecoin uh, start to increase. Uh, Crypto is something that continues to develop uh, ups and downs, but None of this is going away. X is not going away. Platform payments are not going away. You know, so we got to pay attention to it. We have to be prepared to integrate to these types of experiences. We have to meet our customers where they are and not just assume they will come to us because if we're not meeting them there, somebody else is with our same product or service. So thanks for listening. Timmy Nafso, Fortis Payments.